a bit of a warning here at the beginning of this. First, I completely ignored the victory through combat thing, so this game should have been done a little bit earlier. And we were a little bit off structure, so list discussion and scenario discussion is going to be woven throughout the battle report. So bear with me while I try to establish the structure now that I've got two people. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Well, in this video, we're switching it up a little bit. We've got Night's Watch into Lannisters. And uh, another new switch up is I've brought Tyler with me, and now we have dual commentators. Say hi, Tyler. Hello. So uh, for deployment on the Lannisters side, uh, Fire and Blood's really like strange new scenario that really promotes uh, killing stuff and not so much objectives. Um, you're really just getting victory points through killing your opponent's models. Um, so I ended up positioning the most of my army a little bit further back than the deployment zone allowed because Tyler was starting to take up a lot of space on the front end and the uh, there's no reason to worry about taking up or giving up um, table space on this thing because there are no objectives to go for. So the two units of Lannister Guard um, just kind of spread out so I could get them where I wanted to. The mountain that rides with the Casterly Rock Knights I put way far down on the bottom of the screen so that they could uh, just go where they needed to and collapse that side as they see necessary. Um, Tyrion's crossbowman unit is right in between the two guards and I just wanted him to influence as much of the table as possible. Um, with the uh, terrain in the middle I was hoping to get a lot of use out of the corpse pile and then try and can at least uh, mess with Tyler's movement around the uh, um, the stupid like spikes. Lesson learned. Don't put your two weird weird <laughs> weird trees on your side, and then bank on winning that roll. Yep, it's a it's a coin toss. And, uh... As you took my side from me, I was not happy. <laughs> so, what about your your setup on the table? It's I, I so just... I wanted to be as aggressive as possible because you have ranged mm -hmm. a unit of range, and I have nothing. I have melee, all melee. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to be something that's difficult for people to negotiate with on this scenario is with you only being 12 inches away from people when you start this game, bringing some uh, ranged pieces is going to help out your, uh, your, your first few turns. You can kind of pick and choose where you need to go. The Scorpion Builder crew would be really neat on this scenario. Yep, yeah, but, it would have. But, uh, Didn't bring it. <laughs> no, we just got a bunch of Sworn Brothers. And I do, like, you are playing with the healing NCUs, so I think that it's just going to be a little bit... It'll be interesting to see how that plays out through uh, through the game. I need to, in order to beat healing, you just have to play through, or play as many wounds throughout your units as possible. You know, if I focus down on one unit, you're going to heal it up, and it won't be good for me. So, uh, let's get to the first turn and see how this shakes out. So, here I am setting up, and... I, uh, because we're both running three NCUs, I decided to take advantages of the, uh, the board right away to try to negate him having a spot. Yeah, you got, was it Bowen Marsh ended up taking the, the maneuver position? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, because you, that way you can get cards out of him. So... The, the thing that blows about playing Lannister guards, at least right now, and this is my first time playing Lannisters, so I'm not, I'm by no means do I say that um, guardsmen blow. Uh, they're just, they're slow, and uh, I'm used to my Starks, which are really fast. So uh, I, I want to try and not take the super brunt of the damage with them. Like, I want to be able to hold them back at least a little bit to, uh, um, to at least try and slow my, or make it so they don't just eat a charge super early and then call it that. I think that this fire and blood scenario can get really, like, drug out if you're trying to play footsie with your opponent, you know, trying to keep your units out of, um, out of charge ranges. So you're going to have to take it eventually. And now we, we realize that, um, we forgot to do the big part of the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> with with just putting down the markers. So uh, for me, I I have my choice from Sworn Brothers or Sworn Brothers because like the veterans, they've got the three plus save, and I'm I'm not too worried about it with having a little bit of access to Sundering in the list. But uh, I don't want to have to chew through those, so I just stick my markers on a on a couple Sworn Brothers, 
And uh, so what what were you going for with these, Tyler? With the markers? Yeah. I had no idea what any of your stuff did. I just <laughs> uh, picked what I thought I could charge and went at it. Yeah, so I think putting the putting the one marker on the um, on the guard unit that you had chosen with those sworn brothers was a decent a decent choice because like the when I built this list, my intention was to limit the amount of units that were valuable to put the tokens on, and as I uh, overlooked the mo- the uh, morale stat of the crossbowmen and the save. I realized that I had given a unit that was pretty easy to get rid of, but um, you know you're you're putting it on guards probably, or but you know Tyrion and his unit are are, are given for that, but you're not putting it on the mountain that rides because that thing is, you know it's you got a lot of wounds to chew through and it's not gonna be stuck in combat often at least that's what my plus your cavalry and he can move far yeah I can just get away from stuff. Um. Most of my guys are super slow. Yeah, we've been we've been just loading up the board. You can see in the back. Finally, now I got the stupid tactics board in shot. But um, Tyler's got his three NCU's, and I've got my three, and we're just like jamming them on the table just to get them out there. Um, and Tyler, th- you threw up. Um, it looks like Amon on the swords just to sink an activation out of me. Yeah. Um, there wasn't many options the first round. No, and, and no one wants to make that first move. So I think that um, while having three NCUs is a little bit of a liability in this because you're not putting a ton of business on the table, um, that first turn makes things a lot easier having three NCUs so you can pull activations out of your opponent. And my, my assault guard here, I didn't want to march them up forward. Like, they're going to take a charge from one of these units. Hopefully one of the units running over this uh, um, spike pit trap thing but uh um as i started to realize the rules for charging i don't think anyone really had to go over it so maybe i should have marched up so that whoever went on it had to hit it so um but they they just walked up there no no big deal and now i'm getting my fancy my fancy activation tokens that i made fancy yeah i just tried to move um because you took my spot on the board the further up I could move the better for me because I wanted to get closer to those weird trees to try to negate your corpse pile yeah the uh, being able to take this side and make you go through the crap in the middle um, was a pretty beneficial thing like uh, winning that die roll was uh, was legit plus like I think you might have, when you saw Lannisters you might have thought that I'd be giving out more morale checks than what I was yeah yeah that that was a big thought on my mind yeah, because I think you've been watching a lot of the battle reports that use, like, the Cersei-centric strategies. Yeah. But uh, this one's still... I got three units that have Lannister supremacy, and I do have three NCUs. That so is one such of them, a good ability. Yeah, one of them can take the spot up there just fine. So Lannister supremacy is nice, because, like, the, the guardsmen, or the, the Lannister guard, are not supposed to really do anything. They just get jammed in combat with a 3-plus save, and if they kill stuff, then cool, like... Pin a, sh- pin a metal on one of them, I guess. Because they don't really do much other than be the catalyst for morale checks. Yeah. Um, Tyrion's unit is thankful in that he can just shift now and start shooting right away. And I do put the... Uh, the, the nice thing about having uh, Tyrion the Halfman on, uh, um, on that crossbowman unit in this game is that I can put the victory point token on the unit that he's going to shoot. So I can try and uh, maximize the the efforts of getting those tokens, because the the Lannister boat crossbowmen are interesting, but uh, I would rather have Bronn in their unit so I can get more dice. But uh, seven seven dice at fours is still decent. It's not bad. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yep. And here I am advancing, trying to get as close as I can. Yeah, I'm gonna. It looks like I'm just gonna be taking two Sworn Brothers to that guard unit for for what it's worth which is it's all right i mean like like i said I, i'm pretty sure that my understanding of how the lannister guardsmen play is they just kind of get stuck in and cause panic checks like that's kind of their role so i'm not worried about them being there so i just hope that they last long enough to where i'm not hemorrhaging 
points with them. And I just want to make sure that Tyrion gets a, makes a swift escape. So they do get their hands dirty and yeah. charge into uh, Jon Snow's unit, who I think is missing models. Oh, yeah, from the Tyrion attack. I did crown them at I the beginning I think I failed the, the panic check, too. I don't know if you failed the panic check from the crown earlier, but I thought you rolled a 10, and I was really sad about it. Um, Though Jon Snow does have a cool ability, and I forget forgot it most of this game. Yeah, that that was... No bueno, because you're a healing centric list. Yeah. Um, so you put down. Wasn't this the shield that guards the realm of men, where you get to like auto block D three hits, and then you block three if it's on Jon Snow's unit. Yep. And then it's a vow, so it'll stay attached. Yeah. But they still took wounds from something. So oh, it was the morale check. This is the one where they f- they screwed that morale check up really bad from the Lannister. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they went down to three dudes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not a happy time. <laughs> you know, I've I've always felt, I feel like when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play Lannisters this game. I was like, I feel a little dirty because I'm like Stark Baratheon all the way. And uh watching someone fail that kind of morale check that hard was like, eh, it's this is all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay cuz it gives aim on purpose in life. I know, that's like that's what it really was. It's just like Let's make these morale checks and give Amon something to do. It's like when he gets to do it. Yeah, but we've we are that NCU board is full. Like oh my there's gosh, a, there's a party in the castle, and uh, and everyone from the Night's Watch is invited. It looks like, but my my like my NCU setup is more of like my 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 oh shit button because like I've got Pycelle, Tywin, and Varys on deck. So like, it this army is supposed to be more controlly, in the sense of trying to win fire and blood that way, and uh, so it wasn't that the three NCU's were necessary for this list. It just kind of happened that way, points wise. Yeah, I tried to maximize my points, so I was running three units of uh, sworn brothers, a unit of veterans, two watch captains, and three NCU's. I think next time I'll go down to two NCU's. Yeah, I think two is maybe the sweet spot for people who aren't abusing the uh, um, the NCU function. Someone someone did something. They, someone got a charge off somewhere. Oh, this is where we were looking at the veterans. So the veterans, they like, they oh, just they yeah, barely I was tra- failed I was trying the charge. To, trying to do it and not hit the palisade. Yep, and then I had... And I failed by one inch. Yep, and then I had... Um, had explained that the charge you could just walk towards it and then shift into the the fifty percent mark, and uh, so I think that's what we got there was no palisade damage. Um, we had a we had we had to take a small break earlier, so now I think we're just reestablishing where we were at in the game. Um, I did make a slight beer run to the kitchen for my uh, favorite beer in the universe. It's a, it's a, uh, a lambic style beer, uh, from a place called Funk Factory in Madison, Wisconsin. I love that stuff. It, it's good, tasty beer. They make it with four different types of bacteria. I did not know that. Yep. I think it was every day. Yeah, it's a common thing. Well, that's how sour beers get sour. You just you add bacteria to them, and then that's how they get that taste, like yogurt. Huh. Um, so now I think this is where the uh, the Sworn Brothers on the bottom side are going to charge into the Lannister Guardsmen. Um, they did take the the hit on the chin from the the spiked fence, and uh, it was it only did two to them, so it wasn't like massive or anything. I didn't play my vow. This is the sword that 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 guides the darkness or whatever the heck it's called, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where Makes- you get a bunch of dice and. Or you get a bunch of extra I get two dice. extra dice, and uh, the enemy unit becomes vulnerable. Yep. So, the Lannister Guardsmen are doing what they need to do, and that's just exist in front of my stuff. <laughs> so, I, I did pull the mountain back. Um, that was something that I think we might have glossed over. Um, just because the I didn't want them taking the charge. I wanted to line them up for after. And... Uh, I just think I failed every single one. No, not every single one. I passed some of them. 
and then you made me re-roll them because I was vulnerable from uh, one of your NCUs, I think. No, I don't remember what I was vulnerable from. But uh, and and here's where I make my biggest mistake. <laughs> I d- purposely deployed the doggo on the right side so he could get a flank in on your uh, cavalry. Yeah. And I moved him up too far. And I think your cavalry got him. Well, it looks like right now, oh, I passed my Lannister supremacy, or I passed my morale and then Lannister supremacy. Um, yeah. Forced to check on you, but didn't really do anything. So this is where your dog comes up and I see my my opportunity starting to come alive here. So now we're passing on to round two, or well, yeah, round two. Um, I get the, the throne on this one. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Usually I want to take the NCU spots early. Um, with the Lannister, with this particular Lannister build, it's kind of tough because I want to be able to utilize all of my cards whenever I need them. And in order to do that, I need three positions in order to maximize them because the Lannister deck itself wants the crown and the wealth but then Tyrion wants the tactic spot, so I kind of have to give up one of those, and since Tyler's got a, um, got it out for the, uh, the money bags, um, that's not one that I seem to be getting very often. So just trying to assess what, how to start the turn, like, uh, we're getting into the thick of it now, and I've got a lot of options in front of me. Um, like, Tyrion is at, at risk for taking a charge from those veterans, um, the mountains got some options for a charge, and uh, those sworn brothers are just like kind of converging on uh, on that Lannister guard unit. So I throw down another base to try and see how I can position myself to check what the range is for that charge to ghost. And after throwing the ruler down, I only need a three to make it, and that's some funky. Not I don't like. I don't like banking on random rolls all the time. It's like, I'm probably the most timid person when I play this game. What, since I don't have, like, the start cards to to lend me a hand with charging, yeah. I get really, like, uh, tight on whether I want to take a charge or not. But I, I take a chance on it. The mountain gets in, and I just want to get rid of this dog because he's going to stop me from playing all my tactics cards, and I don't want to live in that universe. And he they, they hit everything. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but then the mountain just does two wounds, <laughs> so so the knights of Casterly Rock are like, yeah, let's do this. Oh look, my flank's open. Yep, because we get my my overrun order to charge again. Yeah, that was not fun. <laughs> yeah, and hit every single one and do two automatic wounds. Yeah, mountain on the flank or mountain in general is just not a good time for me. But you did slap down. I think this is the one that's the shield that protects the realms of men again, so that you could block D three of them. So I do sure have some nice nice options in my cards. Yeah, for sure. And it still looks like you're you lost four of them total there, and then you've got a panic check that's oh, a few or one more. Yeah, because we got confused with their armor yeah, save. And and two of my NCUs allow me to draw a tactics cards too, so I'm burning through quite a bit of them. Yeah. And I'll realize that later on at toward the end of the game, maybe I should hold back and not get as many. Oh, and a morale test took two more dudes. So the mountain's already, like, kind of being the mountain. Um, I always You always get to hear those conversations about how people say the, the mountain that rides is kind of busted when he's, on po- when he's with his pony bros. Um, I think that the unit is extremely functional. And there is a slight chance that he is a bit over the top. But I don't think he's flat out busted by any means. So we'll see how he plays out in this game. How much does it cost? That whole unit is 10 points. How much is the mountain? He's only three. Only three? Yeah, he's a three-point attachment. That's the most expensive one there is. Oh, my God. So my well, watch captain costs expensive. two. Well, I that's a different story. The watch captains might be just a little overpriced. I think that, you know, I hate to say this because it's a War Machine thing that happened, but I do think that this game kind of suffers from the inability to flex between the points so like the knight's watch captain he's not worth two points but the knight's watch captain also isn't worth one that is true so i think that it's they're 
maybe, I don't know, I think that if the point system were doubled and then things were adjusted that way, like the mountain that rides isn't a three point, isn't a three point attachment, but he could be a four point, a three and a half point attachment, you know, but then that would just be four points. Um, so my puny, puny Lannister guards are taking tons of damage because, uh, Tyler, you basically consigned that, that sworn brother unit to disaster. And oh, said, I'm it, just yeah, it's going down. Kill. Yeah, I'm just going to try and kill the guard unit, right? Yeah. Um, but they, they save enough wounds to stick it out in the game. So now Tyler's got a hear me roared morale test. Yep with Lannister supremacy up and he's not within yep. range of any of those buffing things. So yeah. it was then that I realized Lannister su- supremacy hurts <laughs> yeah. an awful lot. Yep. So we're down to a single sworn sworn brother, um, which I'm, I'm quite pleased with, but the, uh, the NCU action, I'm sorry. I think we got like caught up in talking about just weird stuff, but, um, the NCU board's been pretty active too, but there's still a few points left on there to get. Um, and this is where I get more of Tyrion's garbage. So the mountain that rides is cool because he gets to activate twice. Tyrion makes it so he gets to activate three times. And uh, I think we just played the card that's going to let me use him again to pull that go. out there. And we just realized we we're like, we don't need to roll the dice because the mountain's just going to get his d3 auto wounds yep and then i do position him back so that he just doesn't give up a charge to the veterans that are coming in at least this way they can you know bounce into the the last of the uh the lannister guard so you slam someone down on the crown but it's craster so he's going to switch the crown ability to heal up those dudes yeah, I just don't want you having the crown. Well, and it's Jon Snow's unit, too. And uh, um, John, it seems like Jon Snow's cards have a better effect when he's still around, kind of like how Rob Stark's are. So keeping him alive is important, especially since that's a full unit of Lannister guards there that you'll be chewing on for a little while. Yep. For five points, that that unit is is nasty. Six with the captain. My cheapest unit is six points. <laughs> you got conscripts coming, so don't worry. Do I? Yeah. Huh. They're the cheap, cheap unit that comes. That's going to be for uh, uh, Night's Watch. What are they called? Conscripts. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. They come with like a cool recruiter. Like there will be all sorts of cool things they can do, I imagine. But uh, um, we don't know what they, what exactly they do yet. But we had a uh, Tyrion and his unit just got targeted by a. Uh, Tywin coming down on the maneuver board so that they could uh, move a little bit further out of position for that uh, that veteran charge as well. This way they, they really are going to have a hard time getting in on him. And our, our NCU board is full and Lord Varys is just out there twiddling his thumbs, canceling abilities. I think we missed one where we you put down uh, um, what's his name? Amon. And I canceled that one at first. So it wasn't the first time you did it. Hey, spoilers, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now Tyrion actually gets to activate and he does put a victory coin on the uh, um, veterans. And I think it's, it was just four shots that hit, which is, is decent. It's like a little over average from what they're going to do. Um. Yeah, getting shot isn't so bad because if I make the panic test, I don't have to deal with Lannister supremacy. Yeah, that's it's nice. I mean, like the crossbowmen having sundering on their bows is really cool, but not having to deal with Lannister supremacy on that's nice too. So the veterans go where I've tried to guide them at least in getting into the the Lannister guard, and those Lannister guard aren't worth any points to you because you did they aren't the ones that are marked. It's Tyrion's unit that is. Um, so we, I think in this one we lose everyone but the last guy, the, the, the very last one. Yeah, and I went full on center with the charge because I knew you'd, I didn't want you to get closer to my Jon Snow unit with your cavalry. Yeah. So I figured I'd just keep him there. So you're going to get my flank regardless. <laughs> and the, the lone, the lone assault captain guard, um, or the, the guard captain, uh, passed his morale test and then took two, uh, 
two veterans with him. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. So now we got the... I think these are just the Lannister Guard um, attacking because they're there. They have purpose in life. Yeah, as long as I've got full ranks, I'll take those six dice. Um, so I'm not... The, the thing is with these Lannister Guard is they are really nice. I think they're a, a, a fantastic unit. Um, but when your opponent's cracking a lot of sundering, it makes it a little more difficult to uh, to mitigate the or to, to have them stick on the table and be as much of a nuisance as much of a nuisance as they can be. Yeah. Um, so I think you played a Jon Snow card. It's the one where you do something and then you get to heal another unit. And you got that veteran back up to almost full. Yep. If I uh, pass a morale test, a friendly unit within long range can heal D3 plus one wounds. Yeah. So now we're getting the Sworn Brothers on the top side of the screen into the side of the guard or the Lannister guard. And uh, you hit decently, and I make you re-roll because I was not ready to take, like, no, nine, don't hit nine stupid decently. saves. Well, you still hit really well. It's just that you didn't get any, you didn't get many sixes. So I think I only had to roll uh, two extra dice or something like that, or one extra dice as opposed to like eleven. So I I do fail all of those but one. I took I take oh no seven this was, this off. was the attack that I did good okay yeah you did really well on this one. Um, I ended up eight wounds is what I took off of that, and I did fail my morale test by a significant margin. So I popped a popped a guy so we could pass it. And I think you passed your your morale check on that one too. Yeah. Um, so we've cleared the board. We're going on to turn three, and uh, I think play another tactics card. This is where we find out that you, you play two on there, but then you had a you thought you had a guard captain. Yeah, on that's right. I thought I had a guard captain, but that was the other squad that you took out. Yeah. And that other squad also, for what it's worth, was marked. Um, so the uh, I have a purple die that's tracking up my um, victory points. And uh, so we're sitting at, I think, th three or two or three at this point because of killing that Sworn Brother unit. And then it looks like you got some more healing. Um, I had, uh, yeah, you put down Amon and then I rolled a uh, Varus to stop the Amon's healing, so um, you only got three back on that one. That's two times. <laughs> um, for a, as a heads up for those, um, well, I guess just in general, uh, this video was shot um, after the Varus errata, so we're not getting any rerolls on this. The option just isn't there. Um, so. Uh, we'll see how he plays out, but so far Varus is, you know, 100% uh, success rate on canceling some of those NCU abilities. I think earlier in the game, Tyler convinced me once that I could shut off ta tactics cards, so I tried to do it again. We had to walk it back. It was so embarrassing. I don't think I convinced you. I think you told no, me you, you could. No, you said, do you want to roll to stop this tactics card? And then I rolled and now it's just forever burning my brain. But um, at least I have Tyrion with me, who on a 5+, plus stops a tactics card. So I've got that going for me. Plus his Tyrion. Yeah. Everyone's favorite Game of Thrones character. It's fun. I mean, like, having a having a drink while you're playing Tyrion is kind of the way to go. Um, so I think in it's, this one it was... It's kind of ironic. Yeah. Because he drinks and he knows things. He does know many and things. And Jon Snow knows nothing. It is very... It's the, the battle of... It's the of, yin to the yang. It's the battle of the titans, right? Yeah. Um, I think I had to. I had chosen to activate the mountain while he was in combat here, <laughs> and uh, th those guys failed their morale test so bad. <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of dead veterans. Yeah. <laughs> they had. I think they had a couple tokens on them too that got expelled or conditions that got used. Like they got messed up pretty bad. Yeah, that I'm was, also really yeah, bad about well, taking them off the board too. No, I just I, I just leave them there as reminders to myself how no, sad I am. We're so bad with trying to keep a clean table. I use the, you know the the you know what is it, ten different measuring sticks or something like that that I really 
I, I love using them. I, I, I really appreciate the ability to just slap a ruler down and be like, that's out. You can tell because this is exactly four inches, so boom. And I don't have to worry about like trying to eyeball it with a measuring stick or something like that. Yeah, I do really enjoy pre-measuring in this game. Yeah, it works out nicely. I mean, the pre-measuring... Adds to the simplicity. It also kind of like pre-measuring does and doesn't matter, right? Because you've got abilities on cavalry that can re reposition them. You've got the tactics board and then the tactics cards. So even if you're trying to like be somewhat safe, you can always like lose out on that. Yep. So it's it's it makes it so I think the people who are um, opposed to pre-measuring don't seem to have that big of a problem with it because it's not like you can just dance threat ranges all day so <laughs> this was where you got super excited to take the black on my one remaining lannister guard because he did not survive the the lone attack i've from always wanted to play that card and you did but then you ended up realizing that it was not good to just take one lannister guard instead you just heal yeah yourself. i have the option of taking <laughs> The attachment or healing D three plus one. So yeah, so you just decide to take the the good the good part. Yep, more meat for the mountains <laughs> grinder. Especially after you found out that you had to kill a guy to use him anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so those veterans are still they're they're coming back. I mean they're they're being a little bit of a pain in the butt, but that's just the way Night's Watch is. You, I think, in order to really beat these like double healing NCU lists, you have to spread damage because you make it so your opponent has to make a choice on which one to heal. Um, having Varus, of course, is a super huge benefit to that because it can shut down half of your healing capability on one activation. A chance of doing it, yeah. Yeah, it's a chance. Well, for most people, it's a chance. Well, and then for Lannisters, too, you've got two Intrigue and Subterfuges in here, so those shut them off, like, just for uh. sure. You just play it and it's done. Um... <laughs> So I think we were shooting into, we might have been shooting into the veterans, because um, I think you're taking saves now. This is after the pizza, right? I think so, yeah, this is okay. after food. Another Jon Snow card. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, you were trying to pass a morale test so that you could uh, uh, come back with one health, and you just barely passed it, so I expelled one of the, or used one of the, uh, panic tokens to make you re-roll and you ended up passing it anyways and got your one guy back so now i'm just like the mountain sitting there dirtling with one dude it is a good card i like it no it's fantastic because uh, it because it keeps your cavalry there instead of charging john snow's flank yeah there's once that veteran if, unit gets gone yeah you're if you had destroyed that you would have scored points plus a free maneuver mm -hmm. for john snow it would not have been good there's definitely something to note, which I'm pretty sure it plays out this way. I mean, we're, we're recording, you know, minutes after we played the game, but um, that veteran unit is not marked, but it has one victory point on it right now. And Tyrion's unit is marked. So with the way that fire and blood scenario works, if I'm a smart player and get Tyrion to shoot him down, that's some, some buku points. Yeah, I think this is where we're where we're doing it so i put a put a coin out on that unit again so now they got two coins uh Tyrion shifts his unit up just a little bit or over because i want to try and get him far away from that engagement where those three lone uh assault or uh lannister guards are just tying down i sure wish i had my doggo about now <laughs> yeah they are just uh they're just tying down two units at once so they're doing exactly what they need to um i do hit you with a, only a couple shots from the crossbowman, but uh, it's enough to get the the save through. I think you you had two saves and you failed one, and there wasn't really much you could do about it. So I did get to kill that unit off, and now I get to go up to. Uh, I think I'm sitting at six points now because I gained three off of killing that unit with a because you get two because it had two victory points on it, and then you get another one because your marked unit or my marked unit killed a unit. So that I think that's that's how the scenario scores. But for you and me, though, we're not killing things super fast. It's At least to me, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, we're over an hour into the game, real time. And uh, I'm the only one with points on the board right now, and I'm only just a little bit over halfway to the end of the game. 
So it could be a slow scenario if you build the, the right way for it. But I, I still don't know if you and I are really playing the, the best way possible. Oh, definitely not. I'm still super new. Well, I mean, in terms of, like, the list build to the scenario, because I we I told you beforehand, like, we did the little Facebook vote, and uh, overwhelmingly Fire and Blood was the winner. Um, and uh, I had said, Tyler, we're going to probably going to end up playing fire and blood so read the scenario and build your list accordingly because i did want to try and showcase like here's what we can do with this particular scenario if we're really planning for it so my list is completely built with the scenario in mind down go the guardsmen so but I, they they sat there for two turns worth of uh fighting from two units and i actually score some points now exactly because that was a marked unit and uh un good it, Fortunately enough for me, the unit that killed them was not a marked unit. Or no, it was. Well, that sucks. So you end up getting uh, three points off of that as well, I'm pretty sure, because it had one victory coin on it that Jon Snow put on. And then uh, it had, since you had a marked unit kill it. Oh, you got four points out of that, right? Because a marked unit killed one. You killed a marked unit for two, and it had one coin on it, so it was four. Yeah, yeah. four points. So now, like, you have two Sworn Brothers and a ton of healing left, and I have a unit of crossbowmen who are not very strong, but then the mountain that rides. So, like, I think my whole army is being carried on the back of that huge horse. <laughs> he, he is a, a working tool, yeah. Well, and we're, we've kind of flipped the table now, too. Like, uh, uh, we're, we've kind of repositioned the perspective of how we're playing this game. So with me having the that guard cap or the Lannister guard unit um, off on the side by that corpse pile and weirwood tree up on the top of the screen, uh, it made it so that the bottom of the screen could kind of just get controlled by me and I could keep my stuff back. So I'm not going to be really... I'm not at risk for eating any really hard charges like we're putting the stick down now and those are some pretty long bomb charges like those guys needed what a four on most of those or was it just a little over a hair to get a five it was a four a four on Tyrion, a five on the on the mountain yeah and uh i'm out of tactics cards in my deck so i only have what's in my hand yeah you burn through you, the whole thing. you still have a couple in your deck well one of Tyrion's. uh one of Tyrion's cards lets you uh, grab one, grab a tactics card out of your grave or your discard pile, sorry, and uh, put it on or put it in your hand. But then you put that adaptive plot or adaptive planning on the bottom of your deck. So like I get to recycle a little bit on my side, but do you burnt through your stuff super fast? Oh, super fast! But you've got Bow and Marsh and Craster, so you're drawing a ton of cards. But now you're kind of getting to this point where like. The Night's Watch is really driven by some of their vows, and if you don't have the ability to change those by the time this part of the game comes around, you would better hope that you've got the ones you want on those units, because you're just not getting any better. Although I think there's one what vow that lets you pull back others, isn't there? Um, the there, one. There's one that allows you to discard it and take one from your discard, yep. put it on the unit. And we did just see that the the um sworn brothers that are marked they took their chances and uh decided to go for that long bomb charge against Tyrion, and they did fail it so uh i had um tywin take the uh, maneuver position so that they could back up and just be a little bit more safe uh from them i just i'm i'm kind of playing the long game here uh currently i'm tyler's sitting at what was it five points by now yeah and i'm sitting at eight something like that yeah it might be i know at some point we got to eight points on my side so i'm not i think it's um we're still sitting maybe we're sitting at five because i only see one of my dice out <clears throat> on the on the top there i decide so to keep track of the victory points by the here i'm not left with a lot of options so i just <laughs> maneuver my second swarm <laughs> brothers to where if you when you do get the flank on me, I'll be able to, in my mind, 
you know, get into your flank. Yeah, um, that corpse pile is really hindering your ability to maneuver around, and that's one of the other reasons why I took the maneuver position with Tywin, was so that I could deny you the ability to get through that corpse pile a little bit further. Um, no matter what, you'd still be charging and and having to mess with the, the corpse pile, but um, I didn't want you any closer to me. And Pycelle has weakened the the marked Sworn Brother unit that's over there. Um, Pycelle and those weakened tokens have been getting a lot of work done, but since you've been taking that um, the uh, coin position or the wealth spot, uh, I really have to lay the a lot of tokens out in order to get mileage out of them because you're removing them often. And Tyrion's crossbowman unit claims two Sworn Brothers. Being able to shift around and just shoot is... They're, they're nice. I wish their dice were a little bit more interesting or like they had more dice or were just a tad bit more accurate. Um, but that which is why I think Brawn is what works well with them. And all I did here was give you an opportunity to use Craster to heal him back. Yeah. So no no harm, no foul. They, they were shooting. So maybe I did do this right. When I was talking earlier about how we were messing with the charge. Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell when you're looking at the screen. But uh, I'm just trying to position the mountain and the knights. So that what I want to do is I want to get into the front of the uh, Sworn Brothers that I'm looking... That I'm that are marked right now. Um, yeah, getting in on the side is going to give me another... Uh, um, another like version of Sundering, just another negative to your defense save. But it gives my side up to Jon Snow's unit, and I really don't want that. So, Because you need another level of Sundering. Yeah. I also, I, like I said, I just don't want to get Sundered back from, or Sundered twice from Jon Snow's side. So there's a chance that I might have charged in a really shifty way here, but it wasn't on purpose. And I'm not 100% sure if I made it, or, or if that's actually what happened or not. Um, the angle on the camera can mess with that a little too. But I, I did get to play the the card that, or adaptive plot, so I got to pull back. I think I pulled up Hear Me Roar or something like that. Um, because at this point I just want to try and jam more wounds. And uh, although Cunning Ploy and um, Adaptive Plot are really nice, uh, they're not going to help me out when all I have is one unit left or two units left. So that was another... I think that one... That was a huge morale test failure. Plus, you know, the damage from the mountain, too. Or this is their morale test. Yep. Plus you have Lannister Supremacy. Yep. And I have a panic token on them because of the mountain applying it. Uh, so you rolled a six here, and I was just hemming and hawing if uh, if I should expend it to just try and jam some more wounds out on you. Because I know next turn you're going to get the throne, so you'll be able to heal them up real well. And at this point, Varys is out of activations. We missed the other two that he did, but uh, um, as a recap, he, he made every single one of them. He didn't fail a single one. Yeah. He stopped a lot of healing. <sighs> so much. So much potential taken away. <laughs> and there was even one uh, intrigue and subterfuge in there that killed, uh, that killed off uh, Amon too for a turn, so... We did. We technically got five I think, stops. I think you, in total, used two subterfuges. Yeah, to stop I think. Him. I, yep, I might have done that. And I want to say three of your four of various. No, charges. every single one of them hit. Every for Amon. Yep, every every single one. Yeah. Oh, so for it, yeah, it would have been all on Amon. I wouldn't have stopped Bow and Marsh or anything. I was going to stop the healing. So Varus Errata didn't bother me. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> But I'm sure that in other games it'll be a bummer. Like, he's just more wild now. Well, he did his job super good. Yeah, he he did it. There's a good chance he could have not like, done it too Like, kudos well. to him. <laughs> I mean, he he played a huge role. Yeah, for this, that that's the thing that's, you know, frustrating about him is he's less, um, less consistent now, but he's uh, still, still a very powerful piece. Yeah. So you put down, um, it was, 
it was Amon that you put down, and I think this is where I either used the last Varus token or maybe played an Intrigue and Subterfuge, so I stopped you from healing that unit, but you ended up still being able to attack them, uh, but it didn't do much. Um, I think I was looking for a wound token or something, because we did one wound to him, but there wasn't a whole lot going on that uh, that I was worried about with that. That was a, some in, intense control happening there. So now the mountain's swinging back. Being stuck in combat is no bueno for them. Um, and I can't really get... Uh, there goes that unit. Yeah, I couldn't get a lot of use out of using the combat zone, or the, the maneuver zone, to retreat them out so that I could then, you know, slam them back in because you hadn't activated the unit yet, so I'd just eat a charge anyways. But uh, thankfully the mountain came through on that one because uh see this is where you uh took your free maneuver and you went back yep and open a lane charge for me yeah and it, we were looking at the, the the stick again for measuring and i think this is the 10 inch one that i put down and Tyrion is just outside of the 10 inches and the mountain is just outside of 10 so snow has to run or snow john snow has to roll a five to get there and then i forgot about the stupid maneuver position that i decided to not try and take and now you're within a respectable charge range for all this stuff. And then I'm kicking myself in the in the in the foot because uh, I had discarded two of my um, uh, cunning ploys, or not cunning ploy, but the uh, uh, geez, I can't remember the card that you uh, you have a you put an activated token on a on an unactivated unit to let another unit go again. And if I would have kept that here, I could have just charged the mountain into Jon Snow and had Tyrion yeah. blinking him for the rest of the game. But I pitched it like an idiot. And here I'm measuring my charge. Yep, and you you, you only need like <clears> a And two. I play my last uh, tactic card. <laughs> yeah, slam it down with the fury. So this is for the watch, and because I contain Jon Snow, I get to choose two effects, and I chose plus two movement and plus one to hit. So I'm actually hitting on... I want to say threes or two? No, twos. Twos, because Sworn Brothers hit on threes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So really accurate uh, charge that we're getting here. So I'm not not surprised to see that every single one of them hits. But I, I think on here I weakened, or not weak. The, the unit was weakened from Pycel still. Yeah. It, so you, I had uh, to re-roll them, and I think you ended up <clears throat> missing two of them. But your sixes that you re-rolled for crit, crit yeah. blow ended up making it. So it was like I took eight again. And I did lose all eight of them. They were not making that, not making those saves. And then they failed their morale. And this was huge for me. Yep. And when I... Yeah, I failed by a big enough number to where the whole unit went down. I think it was and, a one and a two-year-old. Yeah, and now we've got a really serious serious business deal going on here because uh, we've got... You have, at this point, I think you got up to seven tokens, or seven victory points, and I am still sitting at eight. Yep, but I have zero tactics. Yeah, no tactics cards, and Jon Snow is the only one. So now we get to sit here on turn five, and uh, I will be getting the throne next turn, so I'm in a pretty decent spot here to to get some business done. I slammed down Tywin on the tactics board to put down another uh, condition token out on Snow. Uh, I think I ended up putting Vulnerable. Um, I draw the last two cards in my deck, which... Uh, um, I think one of them was a Hear Me Roar from when I put it back on the bottom, and maybe something else. Or I could be off track and um, have a couple different ones. So here I'm in, I I rolled my charge first, and then I had thought about it. I'm like, oh wait, no, I can just maneuver to your rear. Yeah. And then we charge in. It looks a lot. It looks a little funky, but I was just, you know, you get to the lap later part of the game. It and was like, funky. Yeah, we know we know how this is supposed to work. Oh, I'm just gonna get them in there. <laughs> so that's a ton. <laughs> of wounds i think we got it was i said 11 saves <laughs> and and three auto wounds on uh on john snow's unit all saving on sixes i can't sing worth a darn but i'd be singing hello darkness my old friend yeah because is... that's how that unit is feeling about now <laughs> their watch is 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 
getting close to an end. Yeah. So you 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 passed <laughs> you pass three saves, and I make you re-roll them. Yep. And you didn't save that a single do. one. So that's a uh, eleven hits that go on on that unit. Yeah, it's so eleven we, dead bodies. So. And I'm thinking to myself, well, the unit's still alive. Yeah, John. I still there. have What's Amon. Up? I still have Crasser. So I can get at least a flank back. Yeah, you know? see, that's the thing. Is like I feel really good about taking out almost the entire unit with one swing. But you've still got all that healing to where it's like, you're not so bothered by it. When I get my healing. Yeah, when I know. You, when, now, you, when you allow me that pleasure. <laughs> now that you're down to your last unit and your last model, now you can heal. That's It's okay now. I'm not worried, now, I'm now not worried you're about it now. It's okay. It's whatever. I've enjoyed the suffering. So now Amon goes down and he's, he's just going to start. I think at this point you're just like picking up random models and sticking them in there. I'm pretty sure like... Bowen Marsh made it in He's there He's just sending recruits into the field. <laughs> Go replenish so, his flank. I do put Pycel on the combat zone so I can start attacking, and then I'm like, yeah, we forget that we can turn you around so I'm not getting to uh, double-stick you with uh, spears in the butt. Yeah, you took the free attack, didn't you? I did, yep. Yeah. And I have I, I did put Pycel on it, so they're getting weakened. So I, that that the mountain... I think the inherent power in the mountain that rides with, uh, well, it's the mounted behemoth or whatever, um, in the unit of the Knights of Casterly Rock, is they're not a horribly survivable unit. Like, they've got their 3-plus save and Lannister supremacy and all that, but um, I think the thing is that if you have something that can get wounds on another unit, like, they're good at tag-teaming things, so you don't ever really get many opportunities to get wounds on them because whatever they go into the Lannister player is going to try and kill that so they can trigger um overrun which I did miss an overrun trigger earlier but uh I we played through it I wasn't gonna like walk it back or anything. had I been thinking actually I should have took the free attack with Amon that that way you couldn't have had it, but nope, yeah. nope, you saw that and you just nope, this is mine. Well, it was either you take the free attack or you take the healing, and then I take that away from you, and it makes it harder. But I the think free you're attack just kinda... would have also triggered Lannister supremacy. Exactly, so. you're kind of like in a really bad situation here because we're both we're bo we're both teetering at the edge, and um, there's no. I think at this point, Jon Snow has one victory coin on him, and that's it. Like he's not marked or anything. He just has one victory coin. So what happens here is we're going to... Oh, this is where I take the retreat on the board. Yeah, because I don't have like any meaningful activations to get the mountain to do anything, and Jon Snow hasn't actually activated yet. Yeah. So I did put um, another token on them, though, with this one. I think uh, it was another weakened token because the other one had been cleared off by Amon. And then you got Craster down to heal him back up. But uh, the position that we're in that's weird is you've only got one victory coin on that unit, so I cannot finish this game out on victory points. I have to kill. I have to table you or get to the last turn without you getting ahead of me or tying me on victory points. You have Jon Snow left still, so you can still put tokens on the mountain's unit. So you still have a way of trying to facilitate more of those tokens. But uh, for me, I'm just trying to outlast this turn and try and kill that Jon Snow unit. That's the only way I can win this game. Just because that's the way it shook out. You know? Yeah. So I come in for the charge, and I just wanted it for the reroll of the dice. Well, and you know, the one, earlier, and I have I pretty much said this throughout the entire time that I've been playing against Night's Watch that you try to spread the wounds out between all the units, like, as much as you can. But um, in this scenario, it really seems like you're benefited more just focusing down a unit and trying to kill it as soon as possible, and hopefully it's a marked unit. And if you kill your opponent's commander unit early, you really hinder their ability to come back in the game. Yeah. So you getting... We both kept our commanders pretty long throughout the game here. Um... So it, at least we got had that going for us. But uh, the Mountain, once he's in combat, for sure doesn't do as many wounds. But doing auto wounds and um, still getting the attacks from the 
the Knights of Casterly Rock. They, they do some pretty good shaving down there. This is where you proactively take the combat spot so that I don't. You ended up getting uh, Amon on it. Or, yeah, it must have been Amon, and then I must have done something to stop the healing. Maybe I played another Intrigue and Subterfuge or something. I think it was your last one. Oh, my last Varus or my last Intrigue? Intrigue, yeah. Varus is already used up. Oh, yeah, that's re that was the Intrigue and Subterfuge card that I just played. And it was... Oh, no, it was Hear Me Roar. Because you attacked me, I took a wound. You had to take... A oh panic test. yeah that's right <laughs> and uh i was already at neg at, two at super negatives and then i negged it or took another one off of it with hear me roar for like another negative three but you were on the weirwood so but it didn't matter we rolled the um the dice out and you ended up losing john snow his entire unit to a panic test at the end yep very anticlimactic for it was an epic finish it, it was an epic game it, it was an interesting finish yeah um but the so what are your thoughts on the scenario in general like this is this is a pretty unique one to have in the game in my opinion what do you think i think you need to build your list accordingly but also you need to you need to focus on one unit and just get it off of the board move on to the next one because if you try to spread it the damage out like that i mean it leaves you vulnerable to things yeah i think uh in my opinion you need a commander that can be in a unit that can survive but also um influence the combat game because you want uh you want them in a position to put down all those victory coins and then start stacking those on like marked units also and uh i don't know it's just inter it's interesting to see how like i want my marked units to also be do work units too so that they can kill things because my marked units being uh the crossbowmen and the guards that was not a super great time for them because neither of those are... They're not one-rounding units. I mean, nothing's one-rounding a unit in this in the, in the game for the most part, except for maybe the Mountain That Rides. But, uh... No, I think this is a tough one to build around. It'll probably take me a couple more games to get my, like, my full... This is my unwavering opinion on the, on the scenario, but I do think that survivable and combat capable units are necessary and a commander that can exist in the middle and still do fun stuff or good things for your army yeah. is where you need to be with this with this scenario um now when you look at the rest of the scenarios for the game i think that um you don't really need to build a list specifically for any of them, but I do think you need to build a list specifically for this scenario. I don't think you can, if, I just don't think you can bring your all-comer list to this scenario and play it out. No, if, if I could rebuild my list, I'd take out one watch captain, maybe take out an NCU, put in ranger trackers, because I, I like giving out vulnerable tokens, so. Yeah. Well, that and I think help me out a lot. yeah, it'll help you out with this list, especially having a little bit more of an elite army. Um, I know that this scenario, like every game, has the problem with some players where they don't want to take the time to set up a scenario, or they don't have like the, the little tokens or whatever to set up a scenario. They just want like an easy, relaxing game. But um, and I think that this scenario is trying to exist in that space, but uh, it's a little bookkeepy, and. I do think that it's a it's a grind fest. Like I don't think you're ending this game before turn five. No. So not unless you get demolished. Yeah. And and my list was pretty well poised to try and do that. It just uh it still lasted till turn six. And I would I would say Varus was as important as the mountain that rides in this game. Well, and I think Varus is important against Night's Watch in general. Like if you're playing and if you're gonna work if if you're going into a meta where you're going to see a bunch of Night's Watch stuff or you're struggling into Night's Watch. Like, Varus didn't stop being not necessary for that matchup, but I think he really leans heavy into wanting to be there. Yeah. Well, I think that about does it for our thoughts on the Fire and Blood scenario. Uh, I know this one was a long one, 
but uh, definitely a lot to go over with these new scenarios. I think uh, we'll try and get a chance to do um, a dance with dragons because that's one of the other like outside of the rule book release ones. Um, any parting thoughts, Tyler? I know we're gonna try and get you on here more now that we've got a dual setup for recording. So, uh, any takeaways for Fire and Blood you want people to know about? That was a very fun scenario. I definitely bring a range unit if you can, <clears throat> and uh, make sure to paint your models because it was hard for me to <laughs> discern which models were which. They all look black. Yep, they were. It's hard to tell when you got that many Sworn Brothers. Everything kind of looks the same. Uh, I'm going to go home and paint now. Alrighty. Well, with that, uh, we'll call it a night, and we'll look forward to seeing you all in the next battle report that we put up uh, soon. <laughs>